All right, so let's look at another Atwood machine problem. Um, and this is kind of a, a classic. Uh, so we have two blocks with mass M1, M2, and they're connected uh, by a string of negligible mass that exerts no friction force. Uh, the block with mass 2 rests on a long ramp with an incline of 30 degrees. Uh, the friction force is negligible. All right. So not only do we have an Atwood machine, but we have an Atwood machine on a ramp. Um, so that makes things a little bit more complex, a little bit more fun. Um, so first, uh, so let's see, we're told to construct a free body diagram for each block and re-express the free body diagram as mathematical representations. All right. So before even we draw a free body diagram, I'm just going to just kind of depict what's going on in this problem. Then we'll sketch out those diagrams, and then here when it says re-express the free body diagrams as mathematical representations, that's just uh, fancy words for some before, or I should really say apply Newton's second law. All right, so we've got a ramp. Let's see, got a ramp. Um, and in the ramp, we're told that it has an incline of 30 degrees. So that means this bottom angle. So with respect to the horizontal, that angle there, that's 30 degrees. Um, and on this incline, we have one block. And which one's on the ramp? Block two. So this is M2. Um, and it's connected via a string that then... Uh, we have a block hanging from the ramp. So what kind of depicting what we have going on is we have a string. Wow, why is, I don't want my string to, well, maybe it'll be easiest for me actually to draw the pulley first. So we have some sort of pulley going on here where we've got a string that directly connects M2 and redirects the string so that it's hanging straight down. And please draw your strings with straight lines. Again, my pen here is, the nib is breaking, so it wobbles a lot. So basically, um, we have these masses connected so that if, let's say, M2 is sliding up the ramp, then M1 will fall. But it could be the case that M2 is actually sliding down the ramp, so therefore M1 um, is lifted upward. So in terms of accelerations, because they're both connected by a string, both block M2 and M1 had the same magnitude of acceleration. It's just going to be in different directions. M1's acceleration is going to be vertical, whether it's up or down, where M2 is going to be parallel to the ramp. Okay, so let's look at a free body diagram. Um, let's first, let's start with a more complicated one. So that's going to be mass 2. So here, let me just write M2 here to remind myself that. Uh, so we've got a couple forces acting on block two, right? We always have gravity, and that points straight down. All right, so all right, force gravity two there. Um, we've got a tension force that acts in the direction of the rope, so that's going to be in the direction of the incline upward. So I'll call that T for tension. Um, and then we've got the ramp here acting on block two. So the force associated with that's called the normal force. Um, and that's going to be perpendicular to the ramp. All right. And I'll leave force and N for normal force. Okay. So there's my free body diagram for mass two. Mass one has a simpler free body diagram because it is hanging from a rope. So for mass two, We've got two forces going on. We've got force attention upward, which is the same magnitude, so same length as the arrow I drew for the other tension, since it's the same rope over a massless, frictionless pulley, so the tension force is the same magnitude. And then we have the force of gravity acting straight down. Um, we'll say force of gravity of object one. Now, a couple things here, right? So my free body diagram here does not necessarily have the correct magnitudes of vectors. Um, so for example, if you're looking at my free body diagram for M1, uh, my tension and weight here, well, basically looks like they're the same. 
Um, that may not necessarily be the case, right? If block M1 was accelerating, which it probably is in this situation, um, then we would have to draw one vector longer than the other. The thing is, from the prompt, we don't know which way the blocks are moving and which way the acceleration is. So what we're going to have to do is make an assumption, right? Um, so since we don't know the direction of acceleration, we want to pick a direction as to call, call positive and kind of go with it. What we'll find is that, well, either our acceleration, it'll work out and accel our acceleration will value will be positive, meaning the, accel the direction we picked for acceleration was correct. If we end up with acceleration being negative, it just meant the acceleration was actually the opposite way. I'm making it sound a lot more complicated than it is, but Basically, let's assume that M2 is sliding down the ramp. Um, so we'll call down the ramp positive. Um, that'll be on my positive x direction. So if M2, let's assume that so that way down the ramp, that acceleration will be positive. M1, we want to be consistent, so we want to call upward positive for that. So that way um, our acceleration is positive in, in the same way. So, the last step in this part here is to um, draw our free body diagrams in mathematical representation. All right, so let's sum our forces. Uh, let's start with the easier one, blocks, block M1. So summing our forces in our y direction then for block 1, well that's mass 1 times its acceleration. And that's going to equal, since upward is positive, tension minus the force of gravity, which I'll just jump to writing as m1 times the acceleration due to gravity. Okay, so m1, we're done. For block two, I'll sum the forces along the ramp. The reason for that is if we're dealing with acceleration, it's going to be along the ramp. Um, so let's sum the forces in my x direction. All right, so looking at my free body diagram, we have the normal force, which is perpendicular to my x direction, so we don't worry about that when summing the forces along the ramp. Uh, we have tension, which is acting in the same direction as along the ramp, so I will worry about tension. And then we have the force of gravity, which is... Um, okay, um, so we need to break up the force of gravity into a piece that's acting along the plane and a piece that's acting um, perpendicular to the plane, right? Because basically, uh, that's my, my coordinate system. Um, so thinking about the force of gravity, well, that's that would pull the block down the ramp and into the ramp. So I'm just going to sketch actually just here on my diagram itself. We've got, actually, let me change this color. Let's change that to pink. We have part of the force of gravity pulling the block into the plane, and part of the force of gravity is causing it to accelerate down the plane, or at least it's acting that way and wants to accelerate down the plane. So this will be my force of gravity the y component. This is force of gravity x component. Where is my angle of 30 degrees? That's going to be this top angle here. Um, I will reiterate how I've, I know that. So I'm going to sketch here on my left force of gravity straight down and then my y and x components. Looking at angles here, looking at triangles, we've got this triangle here where that left angle is theta, this angle here is 90, which makes my top angle 90 minus theta. I did not mean for that to happen. Okay, uh, so this angle here is 90 minus theta, but this big angle here is 90 degrees. Therefore, this angle in the top corner has to be the angle theta. So that's how I know it's that angle there in my free body diagram. So when drawing these vectors, since my block 2 would only be accelerating along the ramp, my y component of the gravitational force is equal to my normal force, where it's my x component that I'm concerned about here, since we're summing the forces acting along the ramp in my x direction. So let me switch back to purple here. So we have summed the forces on 
block two, so mass two times acceleration, is equal to, uh, down the ramp is positive, so we have x component of the gravitational force minus tension. We want to be a little bit more careful here uh, because force of gravity x component, we can rewrite that in terms of things, a little bit more things that we know in the problem. Um, this question is a little bit vague of what we should have our final answer be written in terms of. Um, but let's see, looking at our triangle here, uh, the x component is opposite our angle. Um, so I'm going to choose my sine function there. So sine of theta is the opposite x component of gravity divided by the hypotenuse, um, which is just the weight of block two. Uh, so therefore, rearranging my x component of gravity, so let me rewrite the second equation, m2a would be equal to then uh, my weight, I'm going to rewrite it as m2g, times uh, sine theta minus tension. So kind of mathematical representations, we've got this first equation here and the equation I just wrote here. Uh, we, I guess maybe technically should worry about perhaps the third equation since we can state here that our normal force is going to equal my y component of the gravitational force acting on block two. I really need to get this pen fixed. Um, and again, that's the, um, that's the adjacent leg of my triangle here, so I'm going to use the cosine function. So we end up with m2g cosine theta. Right. This will actually not be useful in this problem, um, and this would, this part of the doing this extra step would be useful if we actually had friction on the ramp, which we'll be concerned about uh, next lesson. All right. And looking at the time, I think I'm going to leave the last two parts of this problem for the next video.